ಸಹಸ್ರವದನ ಸ್ವರ ಅಗ್ರತೋ ಭವಿತ ಹರೆ ಹೇ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಚಿಕಿರ್ಷಯ ವಾಸುದೇವ ಕಲಾ ಅಂತ ಸಹಸ್ರವದನ ಸ್ವರ ಅಗ್ರತೋ ಭವಿತ ಹರೆ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಚಿಕಿರ್ಷಯ ಎನಿಬಡಿ ಆಲ್ಸ್ ಮಾತಜೀಸ್ ವಾಸುದೇವ ಕಲಾಂತ ಸಹಸ್ರವದನ ಸ್ವರ ಹರೆ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಚಿಕಿರ್ಷಯ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಪಾಪೌಟ್ ಬೈಸ್ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಗ್ರೇಸ್ ಎಸಿ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವಿಧಾನ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಶ್ರೀ ಪ್ರಭುಪಾದ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಪ್ರಭುಪಾದ್ ಜಿ ಕಿ ಜಯ ವಾಸುದೇವ ಕಲಾ ಅಂತ ದ್ಲೆನರಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಯಾನ್ಷನ್ ಔ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ನೋನ್ ಆಸ್ ಅನಂತ ದೇವ್ ಆರ್ ಶಂಕರ್ಷ ಅನಂತ the per all pervasive incarnation of the supreme lord sahasra vadanaha having thousands of hoods swarat fully independent agrataha previously bhavita will appear devaha the lord hare he of lord krishna priya chikirsaya with the desire to act for the pleasure the foremost manifestation of krishna is sankarshan who is known as ananta he is the origin of all incarnations within this material world previous to the appearance of lord krishna this original sankarshan will appear as baladev just to please the supreme lord krishna in his transcendental pastimes purport shri baladev is the supreme personality of god in himself he is equal in supremacy to the supreme godhead yet wherever krishna appears shri baldev appears as his brother sometimes elder and sometimes younger when krishna appears all his plenary expansions and other incarnations appear with him this is elaborately explained in the chaitanya charitamrita this time baldev would appear before krishna as krishna's elder brother om gyan timirandhasya gyananjana shalakaya chakshurun militam yena tasmay shri gurave namaha ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಮನೋಯಭೀಷ್ಟ ಸ್ಥಾಪಿತೇನಾಭೂತಲೆ ಸ್ವಯಂ ರೂಪ ಕದಾ ಮಹಿಂ ದಾತಿ ಸ್ವಪದಾಂತಿ ವಂದೇಹಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರು ಶ್ರೀಯುತ ಪದಕಮಲ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವಾಂಶ ಶ್ರೀ ರೂಪ ಸಾಗ್ರಜಾತ ಸಹಗಣ ರಘುನಾಥಾನ್ವಿತ ಸಜೀವ ಸಾಧದ್ವೇತ 
सावधूतम परिजन सहित श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्री राधा कृष्ण पादा सगण ललिता श्री विशाखा विदाश नवनीरद निंदित कांतिधर रसो सागर नागर भूपवर शुभवंकी मचारु शिखंड शिखि भज कृष्ण निधि व्रज राज सुतम राधिका सरोद इंदु निंदी मुख मंडली वंदिये श्रीपाद पद्म वृषभानु नंदिनी जय जय निनंद रोहिणी कुमार जय जय निनंद रोहिणी कुमार हरे कृष्ण my obeisances on to all the senior vaishnavas present shapro ka disciples thousands and thousands of obeisances to his divine grace ac bhakti vidhan ka swami shapro ka and our gaudiya vaishnava acharyas in the line of chaitanya mahaprabhu may the words that emanate from my mouth be pleasing to all the vaishnavas and to our guru parampara and especially to radha vrindavan chandra jagannath baldev subhadra devi so today's verse basically tells us very briefly who lord balram is lord balram he appears in shravan purnima today is purnima and shravan is the monsoon season very auspicious day and as we all know that there was when vasudev and devki got married and kansa as the brother as the indian tradition the vedic culture is that the brother usually takes his sister to her new home to her husband's home kansa drove the chariot and from the firmament there was an akashwani there came a sound that says you fool you are actually driving your death the eighth son of devki will kill you having heard that kansa extremely angry and demoniac he grabbed devki by her hair and wanted to sever her head with his sword Vasudev ji somehow convinced Kansa, and there was a wonderful philosophical dialogue between uh, Vasudev giving him good advice, ranging from "You are not this body; you are a spirit soul. As far as the soul is concerned, the soul doesn't die," and many wonderful. And he also mentioned that, "Look, you are a very great king, a shatriya. It doesn't befit you." to hurt a woman especially somebody who is your sister so you should be considerate of your position and how uh your position will be minimized in front of all these people gather so please but kans being so demoniac he did not listen and ultimately vasudev promised him that look the problem is the eighth child of mine and devki so i promise you i will turn him over to you uh, that is my promise vasudev's word was as good as gold so kans knew that so temporarily he was pacified and he let his sister go and then as a matter of fact the uh, vasudev had said that i will bring you every child that is born not only the eighth child so when the first child appeared in the womb of devki at that time after the birth uh as promised vasudev takes that first born to the palace of kamsa and hands him over here it is this is the first born and kamsa at that time displays a very compassionate attitude of an uncle or a grand uncle and he says that no vasudev it's the eighth child 
not the first one. So, you know, take him back. But after that, Naraji appeared a few minutes later and he said, Kansa, do you know that the demigods have taken birth in the Yadu dynasty? And they are, uh, you know, your enemy. And the voice that came from the firmament was probably from one of the demigods. Can you really trust them? That it could be the eighth child, it could be any child of Vasudev. And in one version, we have heard that Naraji actually draws one circle, something that you can spin, and he puts eight dots. And he spins it and says, tells Kans, which one is the first one and which one is the eighth one? So Kans is completely perplexed. And then he says, yes, Naraji. And then he immediately arrests Vasudev Devki and mercilessly kills the first six children that were born uh, one after another uh, from Vasudev and Devki. So it is said those six sons, Kats was in his last life, the Rakshasha or the demon Kalmimi. And he was the son of Hiranyaksha, Hiranyakashipu's brother. And he gave birth to six children, uh, the six sons of Kalmimi. And they represented the six different bad qualities or the vices of Kama, uh, uh, lusty desires, krodha, anger, lobha, greed, madha, arrogance, moha, delusion, and matsarya, jealousy or envy. So all these six took birth in the womb of Devki. And they were mercilessly killed by their own father who was Kalmemi in the past. And and this was a curse actually from Kansa's own mother, Padmavati, the wife of Ugrasen. And the curse, he, not only she cursed, uh, because Kans was born of one demon known as Drumil in an illicit affair between her and Padmavati. So she cursed Drumil and also she cursed Kansa that you will be killed by your own family members. And like that, there would be no peace. And naturally, you know, uh, killing those six children mercilessly, actually smashing them on the wall of the jail, the hard stone, that's how cruel Kans was. Then Mother Devki became pregnant for the seventh time. And this time, her effulgence, Sri Prabhupada mentions in the Krishna book, was amazing. Uh, she was very, and Vasudev understood that uh, a very divine personality is going to be born. And when, uh, at that time, uh, it is said that Lord Baldev was in the womb of Devki. And our Acharyas explained that in order to prepare for Krishna's appearance, one's heart needs to be very pure. And that is the reason why those six sons that, that depicted or represented the six different bad qualities of Kam, Krodh, Lo, Mat, Moha, and Matsarya were completely cleansed. And who does the cleansing? Huh? It's the Guru. Uh, he actually uh, helps us clean our, our different bad qualities. Uh, the Shastra says that first we have Shraddha, Adho Shraddha, Tatha Sadhu Sangha. After Sadhu Sangha means including Gurudev, uh, we do Bhajana Kriya, instructed by Sri Guru, how do's and don'ts, like his divine Nishra says, following, in, following the instructions of Mahaprabhu, so what are the do's that we should do? The instructions are chant the holy name, read Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, the holy scriptures, uh, worship the deities in your home whenever there is time, associate with devotees, and whenever the opportunity arises, go to the dham. Uh, so these are the things that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu recommended. And what are the don'ts? Uh, 
As per Shastra, Sri Prabhupada never spoke anything that was whimsical. Sri Prabhupada had perfect as it is. Striyam dutam panam shunam yatra adharma chaturvida. Meaning, uh, associate illicit sex, striyam dutam gambling, panam meaning intoxicants, and shunam meaning uh, meat eating. So these four one should refrain from if one really wants good spiritual progress. So Sri Guru is, is the one that cleanses our heart. And that is called bhajana kriya. And then when our hearts are cleansed, there is anartha nivritti. All that is bad that we have accumulated since time immemorial is cleansed. Different anarthas. And when those anarthas are cleansed, then we actually enter into the realm of, of bhakti, which is called uh, nishta, we are fixed, come what may, rain or shine, snow or storm, we are fixed in our, our sadhana, we are fixed in our, our services. Uh, and then ruchi, real taste, begins. Ruchi means that time, we don't have to actually force ourselves to wake up for Mangalarti or worship the deities or chant the holy name. That taste is so natural. And after ruchi, Asakti, we are so much attached to Krishna and Krishna's devotees, Asakti. And then the next stage is Bhava, where when we are so purified, we are already entered from Sadhana Bhakti to Raganuga Bhakti. And Raganuga Bhakti, by the mercy of his divine graces, we will be revealed our, our, our position in the service of Krishna in Golok Vrindavan, and basically known as the Ekardash Bhav, or the Siddha Pranali. And then, obviously, while the devotee is practicing that, when the time comes, he leaves his body, and he definitely enters into the pastimes, eternal pastimes of Radha Krishna, and his associates in Vrindavan, in Golok Vrindavan, and has obtained Krishna Prema. So that is the, the mercy of Sri Guru. So Baldev Ji is the, is the Adi Guru. He is also one of the Audharya incarnations. There are two Audharya incarnations, Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu. Audharya means the most munificent. What does Rupa Goswami say? Namo Mahavadanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishna Krishna Chaitanya Namine Gaur Tishai Namaha. So Gaur and Nityananda are non-different. Uh, they are the most munificent incarnations, more even merciful than Nandan Nandan Krishna. Uh, one may wonder how, because Gauranga Mahaprabhu is the embodiment of the mood of Sri Radha. And Sri Radha is most compassionate. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is who? Krishna in the mood of Srimati Radharani, in the consciousness of Srimati Radharani. So naturally, we just sang Karuna Kaurumai Karuna Barite Sanaka Sanatana Varanita Charite Radhe Jaya Jaya Madhava Daite. She is full of Karuna, she is full of compassion. And Nityanand Prabhu is further compassion, further intensified. Uh, it is said that Narutam Das Thakur has written, composed a wonderful bhajan, Nitai Pada Kamala Koti Chandra Susi Lala Jai Chaya Jagata Judai Heno Nitai Vine Bhai Radha Krishna Pai Tenai Dhrida Kori Dharo Nitai Pai. So the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda is taking, when one takes shelter, they get the cooling effect of millions of moons because we are here in this material world that is full, it's burning, samsara davanal. Davanal means a humongous forest fire. Uh, but the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda is so cooling like millions of moons. Uh, and heno nitai vine bhai radha krishna paitinai. So without the mercy of Lord Balram or Nityananda, it is not possible to obtain the, the service or the lotus feet of radha krishna, especially in Vrindavan. Shri Prabhupada mentions in his purport of this bhajan, Nitai Pada Kamala, that, that 
uh, if you want to en enter the dance party, these are the words Prabhupada of Radha and Krishna, meaning Rasli, then you must take the, the mercy, you must have the mercy of Lord Nityananda or Baldev. So what does Balram mean? Bala means strength and strength is of two kinds. Spiritual strength, which Sri Adi Guru, the, the fountainhead of all the gurus, definitely he is the fountainhead of that spiritual strength. And also he is physically very strong, Baldev Prabhu. Uh, he's got that mace, Gada. And we see that actually he, he was even a trainer. He trained Duryodhan. Duryodhan was an expert, just like Dronacharya trained Arjun in the art of archery. But when it came to the mace, and the maces are extremely heavy, uh, only big wrestlers, you know, those who have immense, humongous strength, they carry them at Bhima. He had the mace. But Duryodhan was trained personally by, by uh, Lord Balram, and nobody could defeat Duryodhan except Krishna knew there was a weakness. Bhima was so strong, and there was a fight between Bhima and Duryodhan, and Bhima was striking Duryodhan so many times, but he was invincible. And then Krishna at that time, he, he kind of, you know, gestured right here below the belly button. That's where you need to hit him. If you do that, uh, because he had actually, Duryodhan had, was given this benediction from his own mother, Gandharvi, who was a very chaste wife. That, you know, <clears throat> I will open my, because she, because his father was blind, Dhritarashtra, she being a chaste wife also took to a, all her life, although she could see, she wore a, 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 a what do you call, she covered her eyes. And, and, and she also lived a life of blindness. But to bless her son one day, uh, she said that, you know, I can make you very strong. Just appear in naked in front of me. And when I see you, my blessings will be there and you will become invincible. So, but he was a little shy and he wore a little kopi or an underwear. And he did not go completely naked in front of his mother. So that area remained weak. And rest of the body was like Vajra, meaning like a thunderbolt. Nothing could destroy him. So Lord Balram is full of strength. And what does he carry? He carries the plow. The plow is very heavy and the mace. So uh, now a little bit about how Lord uh, Balram's appearance happens in Golok Rindal. Uh, and this is explained in a conversation personally by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to Sanatan Goswami in the Madhya Leela uh, in chapter 20. Wherein uh, Mahaprabhu, along with many other wonderful instructions about the instructions of the different shaktis of the Supreme Lord, the Tathastha Shakti, the Antaranga Shaktis, the etc. So many different. Uh, and then he comes to the different uh, explanations on the incarnations of the Supreme Lord. So it is mentioned that uh, the Swayam Rupa is Sri Krishna. He is known as. Swayam Rupa in as a coward boy in Golokrindavan, which Lord Brahma describes as Govindam Adi Purusham Tamaham Bhajami in almost every verse of the Brahma Samhita. Then from Swayam Rupa, Nanda Nandan Krishna appears Swayam Prakasha. Mahaprabhu explains this, meaning his personal expansions. And in the personal expansions, there is Prabhav Prakash and Vaibhav Prakash. In the Prabhav Prakash, there are numerous forms, all equal in their features, meaning they look exactly like the Swayam Rupa, the coward boy Krishna. Or as an example, when Krishna performed the Ras Leela, as many gopis, Krishna expanded himself identically with all those gopis. So that is known as uh, the Swayam Prakash, Prabhav Prakash from numerous forms, all equal in their features. And they are displayed simultaneously in the Ras Leela and also 
he expresses that prabhav prakash even in dwarka when narad muni was flying over the 16108 palaces he saw krishna with his 16108 wives identical exactly the same features and he was in his palaces with the 16108 wives with his children with his grandchildren playing so those identical forms are known as prabhav prakash i know it is sometimes very difficult to remember all these but because today is the occasion i thought i will ex explain a little bit based on guru sadhu shastra then there is known as the vaibhav prakash what is the vaibhav prakash the forms or features differently manifest according to different emotions or bhava so the supreme lord has many many forms what does brahma samhita say advaitam achyutam anadim ananta roopam he is got he is none without a second there is nobody equal to krishna that is the meaning of advaitam achyutam he is un infallible he is never ever under the clutches of maya he doesn't fall down and him or any of his expansions or any of his incarnations uh, ananta roopam and he has got unlimited forms so in the vaibhav prakash the forms are differently manifest according to different emotions example krishna in dwarka is a kshatriya so his form is different from the form that we find in vrindavan he doesn't carry a flute krishna carries his weapons like sudarshan chakra etc in dwarka he doesn't adorn a peacock feather in dwarka and in dwarka he is in a different varnashram ha uh, he is a kshatriya whereas in vrindavan krishna is a vaishya so here krishna ras kaviraj goswami in the 20th chapter quoting mahaprabhu to to sanatan goswami uh, and then one of the vaibhav prakashas is lord balram uh, now krishna is dakish navanir the nindita kanti dharam what does that mean that his form or the color of krishna is exactly like a freshly formed rain cloud dark shyamam tribanga lalitam he has got the sham color but lord balram is whitish or milkish so as explained in the vaibhav prakash that the forms or features differently manifest according to different emotions now from this vaibhav prakash comes the tadaik atma rupa the same potency but different forms so all the potencies that krishna possesses lord balram possesses and from tadaik atma arises the vilas and what is this vilas different original forms to perform different pastimes but with slightly less qualities so krishna has got 64 super excellent qualities and the vilas forms of the lord the different forms they have 60 qualities four qualities less than the supreme personality of god as sri krishna in golo or in vrindavan so from the prabha vilas <laughs> huh, the fully potent first quadruple expansion happens meaning from lord balram in golo vrindavan he expands himself in four forms vasudev mul sankarshan pradyubna and anirudha and they actually from golok vrindavan they descend into the next spiritual planet of mathura ah uh, that's where they are and from the prabhav vilas mula sankarshan meaning this mula sankarshan out of this four expansions ah uh, all the narayanas manifest in vaikuntha so ah uh, and from the prabhav vilas also the there is a second quadruple expansion of the chaturvyu that is also vasudev pradyumna aniruddha and instead of mula sankarshan it is maha sankarshan ha ah. and from the vaibhav vilas or the swa amshor expansions of maha sankarshan of the second quadruple expansion there are swa amshors which are karana daksha vishnu which is karana daksha vishnu or maha vishnu and from mahavishnu emanates garbhodaksha vishnu from whom millions and millions of brahmans 
emanate from Karuna Daksai Vishnu and all these Brahmans are occupied in the bottom in the Garbha Sagar or the ocean, transcendental ocean that is from the transcendental sweat of Garbha Daksai Vishnu and he reclines in every Brahman. There are many, many Brahmans. And from Garbha Daksai Vishnu, his further expansion is Shiro Udakashai Vishnu. Ashir means milk. And Udakashai means to recline in that ocean. So Karan means the causal ocean. The one who reclines in the causal ocean is known as Karana Udakashai Vishnu. Garbha Daksai Vishnu is the one who reclines in the Garbha Sagar or the ocean of Garbha. He is known as Garbha Ud Udakashai Vishnu. Shai means to recline. And then the, Karana, the, the Shiro Daksai Vishnu reclines in the ocean of milk. And further, Shiro Daksai Vishnu expands into unlimited forms in the form of the four-handed Paramatma who is situated in everybody's heart as the super soul. And he's also present in every atom. Brahma Samhita mentions that. That the, we see the, on the, uh, the cover page of Isopanishad where we see the four-handed form and he's also present in the atom where we find that the structure of atom, there are protons, electrons are revolving and that energy comes because of Paramatma. Just as a side note, when the demoniac personalities make atomic bombs and nuclear bombs, they're splitting the atom and they're forcing out uh, the Paramatma and breaking their atom and then Paramatma leaves, he's very angry. Actually, it's Lord, Lord Baldev's anger. And that's why a lot of energy is emanated from that atom when it explodes. And it creates a destructive, because everything belongs to him. It's a natural state. Why disturb it? So the, the Supreme Lord uh, is extremely angered. And that is the reason why uh, there is so much destruction that happens. So, and then from Karuna Daksai Vishnu, there are four different avatars. Leela avatars, Manvantara avatars, Yuga avatars, and Shaktya Avishabha. So Leela avatars, there are various Leela avatars. We find Matsya avatar, Kurma avatar, Narsinga avatar performing different Leelas. Right? Like that, the Das Avatars. Right? Then the Manvantars, the different Manvantars, the Manus that, that do the, that procreate. Right? So, for example, which Manu are we in? In the life of Lord Brahma, there are 14 Manus. So, the 14 Manvantars are expansions of the Shirodaksai Vishnu. And we are approximately at the 50 years of Lord Brahma. Lord Brahma lives 100 years. And which is, that means uh, 14 divided by 2 is we are in the seventh Manvantar known as the Vaivashvat Manu. So he is one of the avatars uh, of Sirodaksai Vishnu and the Yuga avatars. And what are the Yuga avatars? We know Yuga avatar is also Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who came to give the holy names. Hare Krishna, Nityanand Prabhu and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Different yugas, different avatars, they emanate. And then the Shakti Avish avatar. What does that mean? Shakti means uh, the empowerment or the or the uh, the energy of the Lord that is empowered. And Avish means one who possesses. And Srila Prabhupada, this divine grace is one of the Shakti Avish avatars. Like even Prabhupada mentioned, Lord Jesus Christ is a Satyavish avatar. Because unless and until you are empowered by the Supreme Lord, one cannot do such a huge task of preaching. Uh, because you need very, and, and those who are Satyavish avatars are certainly very much fully dedicated to the service of, of the Supreme Lord. So can you imagine that in Golod Vrindavan, Krishna expands his first Sim two simultaneous expansions is Lord Balram. He is known as the he is known as the Sandini Shakti. Krishna himself is known as the Chitta Shakti, and Radharani is the Haladini Shakti. So the Sandini Shakti Balram is the entire even Golok is created by the Shakti of Lord Balram. Golok itself and the rest of the other different Vaikuntha planets, Krishna Lokas. The different expansions, they all emanate from Lord Balram. Krishna 
leaves that to Lord Balram, that Seva. And as it is mentioned in this verse, in today's word, he appears to serve Krishna for the pleasure of Krishna. Lord Balram, how does he serve Krishna? He's got a very special position. He serves Krishna in five rasas or five relationships or five mellows. Uh, he serves Krishna in Shantrasa. In Shantrasa, what are the examples that uh, creating Golok Vrindavan is Shantrasa? Not only that, Shantrasa is when he expands himself into the different paraphernalia that is used in the service of Krishna. For example, we every day we play the Mridanga. That is an expansion of Lord Balram. We play the Kartals. This is expansion of Lord Balram. The Puja Thali and all the paraphernalia is, is an expansion of Balram. Krishna's crown is an expansion of Lord Balram in Shantarasa. Krishna's flute, Venu, is an expansion of Lord Balram. Krishna's slippers, uh, his shoes, are an expansion of Lord Balram in Shantarasa. Krishna's clothes, they are an expansion of Lord Lord Balram. And all of Krishna's ornaments are an expansion of Lord Balram. So we have to be extremely careful as sadhaks, as, as practicing devotees. Uh, by mistake, sometimes we, we put the mridanga on the floor without a mat, or we put the kartals on the floor. Uh, we should not do that. Always they should be given a seat or a higher seat. The moment we finish, we should put them on the uh, designated spot, which is obviously not on the floor where people walk. Ah, that is why even by mistake, when we are as, as pujaris, sometimes we um, touch our feet. We touch our feet, the altar, in order to dress Krishna. So we ask for forgiveness. There are mantras in the pujari room that ask for forgiveness, that while in your service, uh, I may have to do these things that that are, that are not so uh, that, that may be that may appear offensive, but please forgive me. So Lord Balram understands that, and he forgives, especially those who are serving, you know, on the altar while they are they are they are decorating Krishna, etc. Then Balram is also present in the Dasya Rasa or the me as a menial servant. Many many examples are there. Time is limited, but we can understand Dasya means servant. He always, and in the Sakya Rasa, meaning he is the friend of Krishna. Like is, he is, they wrestle together, they play together, they dance together, they herds, they herd the cows together, they argue together. Right? Krishna and Balram had a big argument during Mahabharata. Krishna took the side of the Pandavas and Balram took the side of the Kauravas or Duryodhan. And of course, that is just to enhance the glories of Krishna. Uh, but in the, when Mahabharata started, uh, Adi Guru Balram, he did not want to see his own disciple uh, degrade so that degrade to that extent. Uh, so he left and he went on a Tirtha Yatra. He did not stay during the, the Mahabharata war. He left because he knew that there would be offenses committed to his brother. And when that happens, uh, you just do not, you know, stay there. Either you cut the tongue when, when one offends the Vaishnava or a Lord of that person, if we are capable, obviously we don't do that, or you leave that place. That is the recommendation. So in Sakhiras, we find that one particular incident that I am reminded on Damodar Ashtakam. In Damodar Ashtakam, we, uh, we find, or in Damodar Leela, Damodar Leela, Jim Goswami mentions, that when Krishna is tied <clears throat> to the upturned motor, grinding motor, then when Mother Yashoda binds him and she goes to the kitchen with all the gopis uh, to prepare for the Diwali festival. And at that time, all the sakhas of Krishna, his friends, coward friends come. And also uh, that previous night, Lord Balram was, was taken by Rohini mother to Upananda Ji's house, the elder brother of Balram, because he was in charge of the festivities of Diwali. So a lot of Rajvasis went to assist him. And, and then she came back that next morning. And when Balram entered and Mother, your, Mother Rohini went straight to the kitchen and Balram heard all that noise coming out from the place where the grinding motor was. 
in, in that room, in that storeroom. So he, he went there and he heard the, the sound of so many coward boys and he heard his, his brother Krishna crying. And he was saying, somebody release me. You know, I've been bound with this rope. You know, please untie me, untie me. And all the different sakas, they tried and they were not successful. Then when Balram came, little Balram, almost the same age as Krishna, right? He looked at everyone thinking that this was some kind of a prank that the coward boys had played and they tied up Krishna. And his eyes went cold red. His Vaibhav Prakash, the opulence uh, was manifest. He says, who dare tied my brother like this? Which one of you? And then Madhu Mangal leans forward. Jiv Goswami describes in the Gopal Champu. It is my Yashoda who did that. Oh, Mother Yashoda. And then Krishna says, Dau, Dau. Krishna is, uh, calls his elder brother Dau. And Dau, Krishna, Dau ji ke bhaiya, Krishna kanaiya. In Vraj, they sing that. There's a temple in Gokul known as Dau ji. And actually the deity of uh, Balram ji is there. That was so old that there was, it was found in the Sir Sagar. There is an ocean of milk in Gokul. In, there is like, like we have Radha Kun, there is an ocean of milk there known as the Shir Sagar. And that deity manifests from that. And that was a very, very ancient deity, just like the deities of Rup Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, and the deities of the Goswamis. They were all manifest too. They were actually originally made uh, by Vajranath, the grandson of Krishna. So they were re-manifest to the Acharyas. So to the Gokul Vasis, the, the deity of Dauji or Balram was manifest from the that ocean of milk, Shirodak size, the, the representation in Gokul. And even now in Dauji Gokul, uh, Balram is very, very nicely worshipped by many devotees. Anytime you go to Gokul, one must, besides other temples, one must also offer your obeisances. We must offer obeisances to Dauji. So uh, in, 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 when Krishna said, Dau, Dau, you know, please release me, release me. So Dau immediately went there and Dau is Balram, full of strength. He tried to untie the knot and he could not. He just could not. Balram, the Supreme Personality of God, it could not. And what is the reason? Jiva Swami explains that the knot was tied in Vatsalya Rasa, which is higher than Sakya Rasa which is higher than the friendship, the motherly love that was there. Therefore, because Lord Balram at that time was present as a Sakha, he could not override Mother Yashoda's uh, tying of the dot. So Lord Balram is present in Sakya Rasa. He's also present in Vatsali Rasa. How is he present in Vatsali Rasa? He acts like a parent. To Krishna. Whenever Krishna goes out cowherding, Mother Yashoda tells him, tells him, uh, uh, Nanda Maharaj tells him, all the elders tell Balram, Balram, Krishna is very naughty. And you know, sometimes these demons come, please take care of him, please protect him. So Balram protects Krishna like a parent. And he says, Krishna, don't go there. Krishna, don't climb that tree. Krishna, come down. Krishna, do this. Krishna, do that just like a loving parent. So, and then the fourth mellow or the fourth, fourth relationship or rasa is Madhuri rasa. Does anybody know who Balram is in Madhuri rasa? Very nice. Haribo. He is Ananga Manjari. And Ananga Manjari is the younger sister of Radharani. Now, she has a very, these Manjaris have a very special place in the Madhurya Rasa. Uh, there are gopis like Dasta Sakis as an example, Lalita, Vishakha, etc. But the younger gopis, under the instructions of the elder gopis like Lalita and Vishakha, they are known as Manjaris. For example, there's an indication given to us by Vishwanath Chakrati Thakur in our Mangal Arati. Nikunja yuno ratikeli siddhya yaya alibir yuktir apekshaniya Tatra Ati Dakshat Ati Vallabhasya Vande Guru Sri Charnaravindam. 
in the bowers of vrindavan in the intimate service of radha and krishna nikunja you know rati keli siddhya rati keli means these manjaris they have totally understood the amorous love of between radha and krishna rati keli and they are so perfect in understanding that they know their services when radha and krishna perform their most intimate pastimes rati keli siddhya siddhya means means perfection and yaya ali bhir ali bhir means the gopis like lalita and vishaka under their guidance uh, yuktir apekshaniya yukta means to engage they are always desirous very enthusiastic and desirous of of being engaged <clears throat> they are asking the gopis how can we serve more they are also known as <clears throat> excuse me king karis another word <clears throat> hari krishna rasoham apsu kaunte <clears throat> yesterday's prabhupad's class that you can feel krishna everywhere he is present in the water we can think of krishna all the time so this uh, these manjuris or these little young gopis are so desirous to serve one service is not finished and then what else can i do so the word king kari means in sanskrit if we translate in english kim means what and kari means to do what else can i do what else can i do and they always are always asking lalita and vishaka how can we serve how can we serve more wow can you know this word is also used in the bhajan by shila bhakti you know thakur king kari gopina mama nivedana sona vishayi durjana sada kamarat vishayi durjana <clears throat> vishayi durjana tomara king karo yami i am your king kari means i am your little servant servitor basically it indicates radha and krishna in the form of a mood of a gopi so ananga manjari uh, she is not a full fledged gopi but she is one of the younger ones who is who is actually very dear to radharani along with rupa manjari or rupa goswami and they in conjunction i know they serve radha and krishna in their most intimate pastimes just as a <clears throat> as a no manjaris don't marry whereas gopis do but ananga manjari is a special case she was the only manjari that was married because manjari is their only desire is never is always to serve radha and krishna but to never enjoy krishna but the gopis have that desire so even radha rani at one point even got krishna married to lalita there is a temple a very close or a small town close to barsana uh, that there where there is the the lalita bihari temple uh, where where radha rani personally performs the puts radha, uh, lalita and vishakha uh, lalita and krishna on a swing so radha rani is very kind of course these are very high transcendental subject matters that we may not be able to grasp but just because we have mentioned that in madhuri rasa she is ananga manjuri and ananga manjuri is the one who can actually take us into the inner circle and in the in the service of of madhuri rasa of radha krishna how is that possible we find that indication in the chaitanya sastastakam in the first verse chaitanya mahaprabhu says चेतो दर्पण मार्जन भव महादा अग्नि निर्वापण श्रेय कैरव चंद्रिका वितरण विद्या वधु जीवन अबाउट हेफ द वर्स सो गुरु लाइक लॉर्ड नित्यानंद एंड हिज परफेक्ट रेप्रेजेंटेटिव कमिंग इन परंपरा श्री प्रभुपाद दे क्लेंस अवर अवर हार्ट बाय गिविंग अस हरि नाम हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम hari ram 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 hari cheto darpan marjan cleansing the mirror of our hearts or minds and what is the result result then everything that is negative is completely eradicated bhava mahadava agni nirvapana uh, the, the 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 forest fire of all the burning the bad desires etc anartha nivrittis are completely eradicated and then what is the positive effect when we are completely cleansed by the mercy of guru gauranga the holy name 
then Shreya Kairava Chandrika. This is an expression that has been explained by our Rasik Acharyas that Shreya Kairava, because Lord Nityananda has lotus feet is like millions of moons. Chandrika means the moons. The rays that emanate from the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda, they enter within the heart through the Guru Parampara of the devotees. And then what an amazing thing happens, the heart blossoms like a white lily. Shreya Kairava Chandrika in the moonlight. Like only certain lilies, they blossom in the full moon night. Uh, so they, our heart blossoms, radiates full of Krishna consciousness. And we get, we get to opt in Vidya. We get, we are full blown Krishna consciousness. And further, there's a double meaning of Vidya Vadu Jivanam. Vadu Jivanam Vadu means gopis. Vadu in Sanskrit, if I translate into English, it's also the same word in many Indian languages. Vadu means to expand. So um, uh, a daughter-in-law is known as Vadu, in, you know, in the Indian culture, or Bahu. What does that mean? Only a woman can expand. She can give birth, right? A man cannot. And Vidya Vadu Jivanam, that Vadu Jivanam means that Vidya Vadu Jivanam means that when we are fully uh, by the mercy of Ananga Manjari, Nityanand Prabhu, and who is not non different from Balram, who is non different from Ananga Manjari, we will be able to enter into the deep Madhuri Ras of Radha and Krishna, and we will get the Vidya Vadu Jivanam. We will get the transcendental knowledge of how the gopis, their love for Krishna, how they act for Krishna, how they dedicate their lives for Krishna. Uh, complete full surrender to Krishna. So that is what we will obtain. Meaning we will be blessed by Ananga Manjari in the form of Nityananda Prabhu, in the form of Balram Prabhu. They are non-different. Shreya Kairava Chandrika Vidya Vadu Jirmanam. So this is Lord Balram. Um, also, Lord Balram has some very... A uh, lot of good pastimes, but I will just mention a couple quickly before I wind up. Uh, Lord Balram actually, uh, he also enjoys like Krishna with the gopis. And uh, Lord Balram, one time, he was on the banks of the Jamuna and he had had his favorite nectar known as Varuni. Did you know Varuni is a very, very special Nectar that emanates from honey that has <laughs> a, a potency for intoxication. And he can take anything, but we cannot. And actually, it is said that Varun Dev, the, the, uh, the, the demigod of the waters, uh, he, his, his daughter personified is Varuni. And she became that nectar for the pleasure of Lord Balram. So Lord Balram and this Varuni actually is sap. Just like we have maple syrup, this Varuni is a sap that flows from the bark of a tree or the flowers of the tree. It actually, and that is collected. And then it is, it is offered to Lord Balram. It is the favorite of Lord Balram, Varuni. Uh, Varuni, actually, there is, a, there is a, some Varuni flowers and trees when you go to Vamshi water in Vrindavan. Uh, Vamshi, what is the place where Lord Krishna played the flute, right? What is that verse that we that when we glorify Lord Gopinath? Uh, uh, Shriman Rasa Rasarambi, Vamshi, what is Titaha, Karshane, Swanir, Venur Gopi, Shri Gopinaya, Nathaya, Shreyastuna. So there we find, and also in Gokul, there is some Varuni, some places, some Babaji's or some locals can actually um, extract that. So when he took that Varuni and he gave it to the gopis that, Krish, that uh, Balram was enjoying with, they also uh, displayed that wonderful pastime of being intoxicated. And then Lord Balram said, thought that, okay, now me and you gopis should have a wonderful pastime in the waters. So he asked Jamna Devi, please come forward. We would like to bathe. 
and enjoy, you know, do Jal Vihar. That's what it's called. Jal means water and Vihar means sport in the water. And Yamna Devi ignored Lord Balram because she was thinking he is intoxicated. I'm not coming close to him. So she did not comply with Lord Balram's order. So at that time, he, Lord Balram displayed his anger and he took his plow and he pulled the whole bank along with Jamna Devi towards the, uh, towards him. And then forcefully they entered into the waters of the Jamuna. And of course, Jamuna asked for forgiveness. For a moment, I forgot that you are the Supreme Personality of Godhead. You know, I am here for your pleasure, my dear Lord. So like that. Lord Balram, also it is said that he married uh, Revti. So in one yuga, in one Satya yuga, there was one king known as Raivat, King Raivat. So he had a very, very beautiful daughter, but she was very tall. And he could not find a matching groom because, you know, she was so tall that she would outbeat all the other males in the kingdom. And, 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 and you know, so then he went to Lord Brahma and he said that, what should I do, Lord Brahma? I need a suitable match uh, for, for my daughter. So Lord Brahma said, please approach Lord Balram and he will accept your daughter as his wife because Lord Balram, he can expand himself even taller than your daughter, Revti. So the moment, probably two seconds that he spent with Lord Balram in the Brahmaloka, he went up there, and by the time he came down, you know, uh, he was, everything was gone, even King Raivat and his whole entire kingdom. But still, somehow by this, by Lord Balram's potency, because it was the desire of her, she remanifest, and Lord Balram married Revti Devi. So the consort, just like Krishna's consort is Radharani, the consort of our Lord Balram is, is Revti Devi. And who are the consorts of Lord Nityananda, Vasudha, and anybody else? Sorry? Janava. Yes. Yes. We sing that every day. Janavi. So Janavi, Janavi means the Ganga and Janva also. And Janva is Janva Devi, the consort of, of, uh, of, uh, of Lord Nityananda. See, and also another thing that Lord, Lord, uh, one more quick pastime, Lord Balram kills the son of Roma Harshan, Roma Harshan Sutta. The Roma Harshan Sutta, the son of Roma Harshan Rishi, was speaking to 88,000 Rishis. And he was speaking, uh, he was doing, uh, he was speaking Harikatha. And at that time, Lord Balram appeared and everybody bowed down, all the 88,000 sages bowed down, but except the son of Roma Harshan. Uh, he did not bow, bow down. So then it is, the, it is the duty of the Guru. And Lord Balram being the Adi Guru, the primal Guru, he killed Roma Harshan by not, by, because of him disrespecting him. So we have to always respect the Guru. Uh, we must bow down to the Guru. One very uh, amusing pastime in 26 Second Avenue. Uh, in the beginning, Prabhupada, Shri Prabhupada used to give uh, do a little bit of Kirtan and, and Bhagavad Gita classes Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 7 to 9 p.m. and 26 Second Avenue. And then Prabhupada already had all the at, at devotees attending or the, the, the audience that was attending, they had already learned that after Kirtan and when Prabhupada would say Jai Om Vishnubhat, Paramanda Jai Dhvani, Paramansa Parivajagacharya, Ashtottara Sata Sri Srivat Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Thakur Jagat Guru Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. At that time, everybody would bow down but except one person. And who was that? Bruce Scharf. Not Bruce, uh, Greg Scharf. Gargamuni. And he was not initiated at that time yet. So Greg, and he, Prabhupada said, why aren't you bowing, bowing down? What's your problem? So he said, Swamiji, I just don't feel like bowing down. So Prabhupada said, no, you must bow down. By bowing down, you will give up your ego, false ego in installments. And the whole crowd started laughing. So it is important uh, when we bow down to the Guru, otherwise mercy will not flow. Bowing down means we have to show humility. And when we express real humility, then 
then his divine graces and his sincere followers will bestow their mercy. It comes from heart. You know, it is not something superficial. And then those realizations emanate within us. Also, uh, Krishna, uh, Balram killed Dwavida, the, the gorilla in Dwarka. He was actually present at the time of Lord Ramachandra. And he have served, served Lord Ramachandra quite a bit. And he also helped fight, uh, help Lord Ramachandra fight Ravana. But however, he had never given honor to Lakshman. And Dwavida in always uh, insulted Lakshmana. So that is the reason, due to the bad, bad association of demons like Bhomasur, Mayadana, Kal Yavan, Jarasandha, uh, he saw fault in Lord Lakshmana. Lakshmana is none other than Lord Balram. He came as the younger brother. And that is one of the reasons Lakshman was feeling that, that you know, I'm, I'm in, the, in, in the Rama and Leela. I'm your younger brother. I have to listen to everything what you say, Rama. And then my next birth, when I come into Aparita, I'm going to be your older brother. <laughs> so that was his mood as Balram. So as a matter of fact, Dawi became naked to show his body in front of young uh, gopis of Lord Balram. And he committed a huge offense. Uh, so that is why Lord Baldev uh, slayed him. So how can we respect? He said that, how can I respect Lord Balram? He is frolicking with all these gopis. He is a lampata. Lampata means a debauchee. Huh? Just like Mahaprabhu also uses that word in the last verse of the Sistastakam. Uh, what is that verse? He says that, Yatha tathava vidato lampato mat prana nathas saivana paraha. Ashli shapada radam vinashtumam darshanam marmahatu kurudva. Yatha tathava vidato lampato. You can do as you please with us, but you are birth master. Lord and Master, birth after birth, and you are our life and soul, O oh, Krishna. No matter, even if you're going with the other gopis, or if you're having this transcendental affairs, so, but you are still, you are, the, you are, you, you are a lampata. And like that, he was, he was finding fault in Lord Balram. So this is uh, the pastime with Dharida. So thank you all very much. I think this evening we will have more nectar uh, on on Lord Bal Balram's appearance day, and I hope we all uh, get his mercy. Uh, his, Lord Balram is so kind that he sends his pure representatives, uh, like Shira, all these six Goswamis of Rindavan, uh, Shira Narutam Das Thakur, Vishwanath Chaturthi Thakur, Baldev Vidya Bhushan, Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj, uh, Shira Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Gaur Krishna Dwaji Maharaj, Shri Bhakti Siddhan Sri Thakur, and A.C. Bhakti and Swami Shri Prabhupada, he sends them for our upliftment to give us pure bhakti. Not only in our sadhana as Lord Nityananda, but also when we mature, he, under the guidance, he, his form of Ananga Manjari, he will take us into the highest mellow, that specialty known as the Madhuri Rasa. Lord Balram Ki Jai. Lord Balram Ki Jai. Dauji Ke Bhaiya Krishna Kanaya. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. I don't know if there's time for any questions, but I think we started a little bit late. But I think in the evening, whoever the speaker is, Perhaps we can direct it to them. Thank you all very much. Today we are fasting. All Vaishnavas are fasting until 12 noon. And so please try to fast and we can chant as much as we can to obtain his mercy. Hare Krishna. Thank you all very much. Jai Shri Prabhupada.